Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Davis, gynecologist in Chico, California. Thank you for joining us. Today what we're going to talk about is surgical consents. And I know you're thinking, why in the world am I watching a video on surgical consents? Well, I do a lot of surgeries. I have a specific consent for each one of my surgeries and I go over a lot of different details. And so I just thought you might find it helpful when you go to your surgeon and talk about surgery that you make a list and that way you can cover each of the items. In that way there'll be no surprises for you. So let's look at a list of detailed items on a consent form. All right, top of the list for your consent, the first thing should be is where are you having the surgery done? It's important because your surgery may operate in a hospital, they may operate in a surgery center, or they may be doing the surgery in their office or in a, in a large office setting. So it's important to know where your surgery is being done. The next thing is why? What are the reasons? For example, when I'm doing a hysterectomy on a lady, why are we doing the hysterectomy? Is it bleeding, pain, fibroids? So whatever the reasons are need to be listed. So you need to be clear as to why we're doing the surgery. The next thing is benefits. Well, what are the benefits? Well, in my particular situation, if we're doing surgery for you and we're doing a hysterectomy, the benefits are you're not going to have bleeding, you're not going to have periods, cramping, you're not going to have cancer of the uterus, cervix, ovaries, because those are going to be gone. So you can see how in each particular surgery it's important to know what are the benefits? What am I expecting to achieve from having this surgery done? The next thing are risk. Once again, I'll talk about risk of infection. If I'm talking about hysterectomy, for me, the risk of infection is less than 1%. Talk about bleeding. What is the risk? What's the expected blood loss for this type of surgery? Uh, what are the complications that may occur? How often do you have to redo this surgery? Uh, those are a lot of the things you need to look at. So those are some of the risk. The other thing is, if you're having surgery in an outpatient surgery center, what's the chances that they may have to transfer you to a hospital to either redo the surgery or to recover after the surgery because maybe there's uh, the surgery took too long or there's some pain or something like that. So for us where we do an outpatient hysterectomy, that's a very, very small chance, but I go over that so that my patients understand that if unfortunately we can't do it laparoscopically and we have to open them up, we do the surgery and then we transport them to a hospital and they stay overnight and go home the next day. So that's important that you kind of look at what are your options if things don't go so well in an outpatient setting. Alternatives, well, that's a really good option. And so, for, for once again, I'm using the kind of the hysterectomy uh, situation, but we always talk about what are the options, what other alternatives are, what do I have other choices to do, such as an ablation or doing it, taking out the fibroids and leaving the uterus, um, doing a DNC, using a marine IUD. There's lots of alternatives we have for hysterectomy. So I think when you're having surgery, talk to your surgeon and ask him what other alternatives can we do or can we try. Now, sometimes your insurance company may suggest alternatives and that's not a bad thing. I think it's always a, it's a good thing. Anesthesia, and this is really crucial. Let me tell you that today the standard of care for anesthesia is to make sure that when you wake up in the recovery room you have zero pain. Now, how do we achieve that? Well, from my type of surgery in gynecology, we're doing everything from the waist on down. So, almost every one of my laparoscopic surgeries, we have a spinal done in addition to going to sleep. And that spinal medicine takes away all of your pain during the surgery, and that way you don't have to have narcotics. So when you wake up in the recovery room, you don't have nausea, and then if you wake up in the recovery room with no pain, your recovery's cut in half. That's huge. So if you're having a rotator cuff done, hopefully your anesthesiologist is going to do some sort of a block before you go to sleep. If you're having knee surgery, hip surgery, there's lots of blocks that anesthesiologists can do to assist the general anesthetic to make sure that when you wake up, you don't have pain. So it's real important you talk to your surgeon and say, what are my alternatives with anesthesia? What are we going to be doing? Now that may make them a little bit uncomfortable, but you know what? You're the one having surgery. This is really important. And if your surgeon's uncomfortable talking to anesthesiologists, then that's an issue. That's a real problem. You know, 
our anesthesiologist at our surgery center, it's a team. They are just as much interested in you not having pain as me wanting you to not have pain. So they are very, very involved. And so you want to make sure that your surgeon talks to anesthesia so that you can work out a way that you don't have pain after the surgery. So that's very important. Uh, cost, well, it's important. I think in this day and age, you're, it's, not, it, it's not unreasonable for you to ask and say, what's my cost going to be involved in this? What am I going to owe you, the surgeon? What am I going to owe the surgery center? What am I going to owe the hospital? And you know what? Our office does that all the time. We have girls in our office that take that. They take all that information, they go through, and they tell you exactly what it's going to cost. Because you know what? Good grief, you can have four people with four Blue Shield plans in the same town, and every one of them has a different plan. Don't ask me how. It is crazy. So you never know until they put the numbers in, they put in the procedure and the codes, and then somebody comes up and says, okay, here's what your cost is expected to be, here's what your deductible is, here's what you've already met, and the same thing for the hospital, and the same thing for a surgery center. Just remember, and this is, if there's one little pearl you remember from this whole video, is that it's cheaper to do your surgery in a surgery center than it is in a hospital. Hospitals are going to charge you three times more because they can, then, you, then you're going to be in a surgery center. So if you're having to pay out of pocket and you have a share of cost, you have a 20% copay or a 40% copay for crying out loud, you got to do it in a surgery center if at all possible because 20% uh, of a large amount is huge, but 20% of a smaller amount is, is going to save you a lot of money. So don't be afraid to do that and say, before we do the surgery, I got to know. And so if the office, your surgeon should, their office should do that and they help coordinate with the hospital or the surgery center so that you know up front so there's no surprises. Uh, guarantees, well, you know, for my example, when I'm talking about hysterectomy, I mean, about the only thing I can guarantee is that they're not going to get pregnant, <laughs> not going to have periods, not going to have bleeding, not going to have cramping, not going to have cancer, uterus or cervix or ovaries because those are gone. But for each surgery, it's a little bit different. But, you know, we can't guarantee it. That's why there's a practice of medicine. We're not perfect. But your doctor will talk to you and say, okay, you know, here's what my expectations are for this surgery. And I think it's important that both of you have the same expectations so there's no surprises. And then final, questions. Any, you know, I always, at the end of my consent, I go, do you have any other questions? And to me, when, when my patient, or if you're my patient, you go, I don't have any more questions. Then I go, great. We nailed it on the consent. We covered everything. Because the last thing I want is for you to have surprises. And you go, nobody talked to me about that. So it's real important when you're looking at your consent for surgery that you talk about each one of these things. So feel free to use this when you talk to your surgeon. And, and you know something? If your surgeon is uncomfortable with, it, with your asking these questions, and they get defensive, and they're very uncomfortable, then maybe you need to get a second opinion. That's not a good situation. The doctors that are very confident about what they're doing, they're very comfortable with you asking questions, they don't have any problems. They're, they're, they're very comfortable with what they're doing and how they're doing it and, and going over things with you. Then you've got a great situation. So I would encourage you to, to utilize this to help make your decision process a little easier when you choose to have surgery.